Go ahead. Okay, great. Hello again and welcome uh, today to today's uh, webinar, Choosing Your Location. Um, this webinar is being presented by CDS Consulting Co-op with Food Co-op 500. We had about 50 people who registered for today's seminar and we're so glad that you are all here. Um, today's presenter will be Debbie Swasuna and uh, Debbie is a market analyst working with CDS Consulting Co-op. So Debbie, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah, thank you Marilyn. Um, I'm Debbie Swasuna, uh, one of the many CDS consultants, uh, family that keeps growing and growing. And what I do is I, I conduct a type of research study called a market study. So when you're ready to open a co-op store in your town uh, and you want to find out if there's enough sales potential in the market to support that co-op, uh, in other words, you want to find out if the market is viable and where that store should be located uh, to uh, achieve the best sales potential, you'll uh, need to have a site and location consultant like me conduct what is called a market study. And today I'm going to be discussing um, basically how a market study will help you choose the right location for your store, which is easier said than done. And uh, I have a guest host today who's going to um, show a test to that. And uh, speaking of her, let, let me introduce her right now. Uh, I've invited Rochelle Prunty to join us today. And uh, she is the general manager of River Valley Market Co-op. And I'm, I'm extremely happy that she took time out of her busy schedule today to join us. And I thought it would be great to kick off today's webinar with Rochelle uh, sharing her experiences with choosing the right location for their co-op and, and how the market study actually helped them hone in on the right site and location and also helped them secure the funding they needed to get their store built and open. Um, so, Rochelle, uh, are you ready to go? I am. Thank you. Well, Hi, everybody. Okay. Um, so, uh, I've got 10 minutes, and we actually started talking about opening this co-op in 1998 and opened it in 2008. So, I'm going to go over a, a, a year a minute really fast. <laughs> um, and I, I uh, wanted to start by saying when we, when we first were meeting, the question was what kind of, uh, you know, what size of a store do we want to do? What, what do we need? And the ideas ranged from, you know, 30,000 square feet, um, a regular supermarket with everything in it, to, you know, something, something uh, small on some side street in a spot that would be really cheap. And so those were the kinds of questions that we were grappling with. And um, uh, the uh, board, when they started working on this, um, everyone had opinions. Everyone on the board had opinions about where the best place was and what the best kind of store to make would be. And uh, so they kind of had to back up a little bit and say, OK, you know, there, there are people that really know um, what would what would work in Northampton, and we should talk to them. And so, from there, they went to to CDS. But I want to just back up a minute. I was I worked for a co-op um, many years before this that that uh, built a they actually built a second store and uh, had decided that they the that they knew that that it would would be a, a great place for a store that they they would uh, do really well. It was a it was a much bigger town than where the current co-op was, and they were doing a much smaller store, and it would be a slam dunk, and that they didn't need to spend however many thousands of dollars on a market study to tell them what they already knew, and um, as it as it turned out. That particular store that was built with uh, uh, the idea that it needed to do a million dollars a year in sales never went over five hundred thousand a year in sales, and had to be closed in in uh, three years. And the thing that the board kept going back to is like, they never did a market study, and so you know, is five hundred thousand the amount that we should be doing, or should it have really been the million that we started with? Um, and and so 
So we didn't know if there was more of a market there that we weren't that we couldn't get, or if you know we built the store in the wrong place and it was it was not good. So so that's a sad story, and I think it was really great that River Valley Market wanted to avoid that kind of situation. Um, Debbie, do you want to go to the next one? Done. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, CDS came in, told us we had a great market, um, and uh, uh, had ideas about what kind of location. It wasn't 30,000 square feet. It was more like 15 for us um, in that range or as close to that as we could get. So with that information, we were able to to really hone in on on where we where we wanted to go for real estate. Um, we had some unusual things with real estate here that were very challenging. There's a stop and shop store that in 1960 had put uh, deed restrictions on most of the good commercial real estate that you couldn't um, ever have a business located on on uh, basically most of our business strip that sold groceries. So back in 1960, they managed to lock out uh, competitors opening up in a key stretch of real estate that would be good. So um, we had to look a lot. We found in a neighboring in a neighboring town, we found a uh, 15,000 square foot former supermarket that would have been great after having looked a lot. Um, and a lot of us really wanted to open there because we could do it fast. Um, you want to flip to the next one? Yeah. Um, and so, and there was a lot of debate because there is a Whole Foods store in that in that same area, and a lot of people were like, "No, no, we wanted a store on the other side of the river, so we don't have to go across the river, with like we do now for Whole Foods." And we brought CDS back in. They looked at it, and um, and they said that we should stay on the other side of the river where we had originally planned. That that's that's the stronger market, and um, Anyway, so so we we let that we let that ready to go little uh, supermarket uh, go and kept looking. We had a number of different sites and finally ended up uh, uh, in a in a store that is on the very edge of the commercial district, but it met was was on the right side of town. It was on the commercial district that we wanted to be accessible from our town and um, and did not have a deed restriction and the landlord was willing to work with us. So uh, we were able to build this store uh, right where our members in the town where our members wanted to have it and um, and we opened in 2008. And the other thing Every every site we brought CDS and every site that we were serious about. It's like, is this you know what can we do for sales here? And we got really good information uh, that helped us to know whether it was the right, whether it was whether it was viable and what we could plan for that. So um, it was really necessary for getting getting a location that would work. And it was also um, when we went to the banks and for funding, uh, the banks really wanted to see, you know, how, how are you going to make this work? What's, how, how do you know you're going to get sales? And um, we were able to, to uh, bring out the market study and people could look at that. And, and uh, CDS even came and met with the bankers uh, did a presentation and um, was was key to to not only getting our site, but it was key to getting our funding. Um, 
And it was also key to when you're planning, you decide you're going to open a store and you want to plan your financials going forward and and our um, and and hitting those numbers is so critical to your success and when we opened we were targeting uh, for our store was seven and a half million and uh, we're really focused on that's that's where we needed to go and we actually came in about eight percent over so that was really good just really really helps to know what you should what you should be aiming to get so that you can set your plans all according to that. And then a previous experience that I had, we we never had that luxury, which I think is essential. Um, so I think I think I made it in my ten minutes. Ten minutes. Rochelle, minutes. there is a question for you from uh, Dean. Uh, Dean, I've unmuted you. Could you uh, ask your question? Well, I'm. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. Uh, the uh, question I have, the term you're using is market study, and in some of the things I've read, uh, a market study can be just one component of a feasibility study. So can you distinguish between those two terms? Mm -hmm. The market study is um, entirely focused on uh, sales potential for, for a um, location and site. So it's just the, uh, it's just the top number. What, what, what sales, sales could, you could you expect? Thanks, Rochelle. Uh, there's another question from Robert. Uh, Robert, could you tell us what club you're from and what your question is? Yes, I'm with Bay Ridge Food Co-op in New York City. <clears throat> and I'm curious about the, you mentioned the original square foot projections that you had. Was that based on a certain number of projected members? And if so, what, what was that? Um, it was not not actually based on the number of members. It was based on the um, uh, it was based on what CDS saw in their analysis of the population of the area that we were going into, on how likely what the population base was, how um, attuned they were to natural and organic foods, and how how um, how much interest um, they would have in in a food co-op to get those foods as as opposed to um, going over the river to Whole Foods or getting them at the regular mainstream supermarket. Thanks, Rochelle. Debbie, I think we could go ahead now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Rochelle. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's. Okay, let me uh, first go over the um, desired outcomes from today's webinar. Um, now that you've actually heard about Rochelle's actual case study. Um, uh, first, I, I hope that uh, you're, you'll have a better understanding of what a market study is and why you need it. Um, also, you'll learn when in your planning process you want to request that market study. And uh, most importantly, by the end of the day, you should feel more confident about finding the right site for your co-op because I will spend a lot of time discussing those um, uh, characteristics that you need to look for when when picking a site, and um, and it's and it's important to remember that any market study that I or anyone does for you, it's most useful when you pick a specific site because the sales projection that I provide is going to be heavily influenced by your site's actual site and location characteristics. Um, so if it's a hypothetical you know, area, then of course I have to make assumptions about those characteristics, uh, which might not come to be. Um, and those are the outcomes. Uh, the outline of this presentation or this webinar, I've broken it into four um, topics. Uh, the first one is, uh, you know, what, the, what is the purpose of a market study and why do you need it? Uh, the second topic is when to request the market study. The third topic is I'm going to explain what the basic difference is between location and site because those people get confused about those two terms and think they mean the same thing when they're entirely different. Um, and then I'll talk about those specific location and site characteristics 
you'll want to look for uh, when you're picking your, your site for your co-op. So let's, uh, let's start with the uh, first topic, uh, why, uh, what the purpose is of a market study and why you need it. Um, okay. A, uh, uh, I'm pausing a little because I have a new computer and my fingers can't go to where they normally go. The keyboard is a little bit different, so I have to really concentrate on where the keys are on this, so I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, the, um, a market study is going to essentially tell you whether uh, your market is viable for a co-op, but not whether the store itself is financially viable. I think, um, I think, I think it was Dean that, that just asked that question. Um, if you want to know the financial viability, you'll have to talk with another consultant, Bill Gessner, or your own financial analyst, after the market study has been completed. He's going to take the sales projections from uh, my market study for your store and include it in a pro forma analysis. And there has been, in the past, confusion about this, so I'm glad actually somebody uh, asked that question. A market study is more than market viability and a, a, um, a pro forma analysis that, that, and financial analysis that Bill Gessner does, the other CDS consultant, is more of a feasibility analysis. So I do the market viability. Uh, piece of, of, of the uh, process. Um, a market study will also help determine the appropriate size for your co-op uh, based on the sales potential that exists in your market. Like Rochelle said, her group was even considering a much larger size and the market study came back and told them uh, what they should be targeting. Um, but even though I say that, I know that most new startups tend to look for smaller stores than the market will bear because they want to reduce their risk. They would rather build their, their store too small than too big. And, and, I, and that's understandable, um, but if that's the path you want to take, I, I'll just make one suggest, suggestion to you, and that is that you uh, invest in a facility that will enable you to expand in maybe adjacent space in the future in four or five years. Because the last thing you want to do and the last thing Rochelle wants to do is to go back and go through this whole process four years later because it takes a lot of time, effort, and brain damage just to come up with that first location. Um, so look for uh, uh, something that you can expand if, you wanna, if, if you're worried about uh, the risk of building too big. And a market study will also tell you if your co-op is located in the right location to serve your market. It will help you hone in on that uh, area of the market where sales potential will be um, maximized. All right, so um, fr from a research standpoint, it's, it's virtually impossible for me, because I'm not a real estate broker in every market, to check all uh, possible spaces for your co-op. But if I take into account the trade area your co-op's going to serve, the demography of the trade area, the competition, I can tell you what area, like a target intersection or a particular part of town represents the ideal location for your co-op in order to maximize its sales. Um, but obviously, if I'm picking a target area or a target intersection, there's no specific site or building for me to evaluate. And again, I would have to make certain assumptions about these characteristics, uh, which may or may not become a reality when you actually have a specific site. Um, and uh, so that's why I tell my clients the market study is most useful when you, your group has actually identified a specific site for me to evaluate. And later in this webinar, I'm just going to spend a lot of time describing what to look for in choosing a site. So hopefully you'll be um, better able to do that after today. A market study will also quantify your site's uh, sales potential. Sales, uh, as I said, are affected by the trade area demography and competition but it's also affected by the size of your store, the amount of parking uh, your store has, its retail synergy, its accessibility from all parts of the market. Um, and a market study is going to take all of that into account to come up with uh, the sales that your site will achieve. I, I think somebody else was asking Rochelle kind of about what, how she got the numbers uh, uh, for her, her projections for a store and wondered if it was based on the members. No, it's, it's based on the market at large and all of these different characteristics. Um, and that's how I come up with a sales forecast for your store that um, you call up Bill Gessner and you plug into your financial year pro forma analysis. 
Um, lastly, the market study results, um, uh, along with the financial analysis that Bill Gessner can help you out with, uh, are accepted by banks and lending institutions as part of your loan application package. And you, can, and you know now from Michelle's experience how important uh, the market study was in getting the funding to get their uh, store um, open, uh, built and open. Um, so that's, uh, that's the, yeah. So um, to summarize that first uh, of four sections, the market study provides a critical evaluation of your specific site that you have for your co-op. It gives you the sales projection that that specific site will generate. Um, and it provides you with the information that you need for your feasibility analysis uh, with Bill Gessner, um, which is an important uh, thing to have for your, um, to get your funding. So uh, since that's the end of the first segment, we can pause here and see if there's any questions uh, from anyone, or I don't know if Rochelle wants to add anything to what I've said. We don't have any questions right now from the audience. If anybody wants to ask a question, just type it into the chat box. If for any reason you don't want to ask your question live, just let me know that, but otherwise we'll unmute you. One thing that I thought of is that um, that uh, there are there are other ways to do market studies um, in the in the uh, sad story that I gave of the of the new store we built that we had to close. Um, you know what they did is they got the traffic count information of how many cars are going by the the road and looked at the population and and there are a lot of there are a lot of people that can do market studies of of various sorts and and I think the strength that CDS has is they have experience with food co-ops, natural food stores uh, uh, and it's so it's just it's a it's a really um, it's it's a market study not just a market study, but a market study by people who know our particular niche, which is just a little bit odd. Um, we're not mainstream grocery. We're not exactly natural foods. Um, and, and they have a, a lot of experience with that particular area, and I think that's really important. Uh, okay, thanks, Rochelle. Um, since there weren't any questions, I'll just jump to the second topic. Uh, this is the second of four, which is uh, it's short. Um, I believe I only have one slide for it. And it's when you should request your market study. Um, this is a short list of things you need to do before you begin your market study. First and most importantly, you want to make sure that you have the money to cover the cost of your market study before you actually request it. And the base fee for a market study for a new co-op is $8,000 plus expenses. Uh, so you should budget for a total of uh, ten to eleven thousand dollars for a market study. And I noticed from the people asking the questions that we have um, in our audience, people from existing co-ops, and sometimes existing co-ops like to do more of a strategy um, and not just look at one store, but look at options such as relocating and expanding their store versus, you know, opening a second store. So they want various scenarios. So the cost will go up per scenario, and that's something you can just call me and ask me, and I can I can give you an estimate on you know exactly what your needs are. Um, and but for new co-ops, uh, based on my experience with them, they've been able to get loans or grants that um, I would recommend that you you talk with um, Stuart Reed or may, maybe even Marilyn uh, to find out more about grants that might be available to you. Um, there were two groups that I worked with that actually got money for their market study from an existing co-op that wanted to help them out that was in the same general market area. And then uh, your members can also uh, help you raise the money for market study as well. And uh, as I mentioned, you want to have a specific site. Uh, usually one to three is a good number because um, you know, not all the sites actually uh, become available uh, or remain available to you. So pick one to three sites. Uh, specific sites for your co-op. And in the fourth and last section of this webinar, I'm going to cover those characteristics that you want to look for when picking those one to three sites. And the under optional here on my slide, 
there were a couple of co-op planning groups that actually did surveys among their community uh, residents uh, and members to find out what they wanted uh, from the co-op. And I just thought this would be good to mention here because it's, uh, I thought it's a great idea because it gives you information about the people's current shopping habits, you know, where they shop now and how much they spend on their groceries and how frequently they buy them. And it, you can also ask them what they want from the co-op, which is something that they probably aren't getting from the store that they currently shop. And you can find out how important things are to them, like locally produced foods or low prices or green products or fresh seafood, and you know, go on and on and on and on. And you can ask them where they think the store should be located. I mean, I might not agree with their choice, but it, it would be nice to, to, to kind of find out what their expectations are. Uh, all right, so as I said, this is a brief section. Uh, to summarize this uh, second section, you want to have 10 to 11,000 uh, in your budget for your market study. Uh, you want to pick the specific site for your co-op uh, before requesting the market study. And just in suggestion, uh, if you have the means, you, you probably want to survey your members or community residents about what they want to get from your co-op. Um, uh, all right, I'll pause again and see if there are uh, any questions. Um, and Rochelle, if there's anything uh, you want to add, just always feel free to jump in as well. Yes, Debbie, there's a question from Karen, uh, who's not sure if her mic is working, but I've unmuted it. Why don't you try, Karen, to see if you can get in here? Nope, doesn't sound like it. Um, Karen's question was um, whether a market study includes a community needs assessment. And uh, you've addressed that a little bit, Debbie, but um, maybe specifically on the community needs assessment. Is that part of a market study? No, that is separate. And um, there are uh, there was a uh, co-op in um, Huntsville, Alabama, a, a startup that actually did a community needs assessment. And out of that came uh, the idea of a grocery store to serve their neighborhood. Um, but it is definitely a separate thing. And it's usually uh, the thing that prompts a group to get together and kind of start the whole co-op planning process. Thanks. Um, I think you can go ahead. All right. So, OK, this is the third uh, of the four segments. And this is also a brief uh, section. It's the fourth one that's kind of the longest section. But this one, I just want to explain the basic difference between location and site, because people use them interchangeably. And um, just uh, location, location, location is what everybody hears about. And it is really more of a marketing term. It's, it's the geographic area in your town that's going to align your business with the right population size and demographic profile. Um, for example, you, you want your store to be located in a place that's easily accessible to the residents of the market. And you don't want any barriers like rivers or know, railroad tracks or uh, cemeteries or even psychological barriers that might interfere with your shoppers being able to reach your store. And also, you want to have other businesses or retailers in the area that provide some good synergy for your co-op, like bookstores, or office supply stores, or bike shops, or yoga studios. Basically, um, those businesses that are going to serve the same type of uh, customer as, as, your, as a co-op customer. Um, on the other hand, site characteristics are the actual physical attributes of a specific piece of land or building. Um, yeah, an example is, is the land, are, if you're looking at a vacant lot, is it large enough for both the store and the parking lot? Is the uh, uh, building large enough to serve the available sales potential in the market? Is there enough parking spaces for a building of the size that you want? Is the parking lot easy for customers to get in or out of? And uh, most important, how visible is the store from the road? And uh, and and I know Roche, I, I know Rochelle had uh, I guess uh, bumped into this a lot, um, and she'll agree with me that the location site equation doesn't always come out perfect because you're not always going to find the right site in the right location. Sometimes you'll find a great site 
uh, but it's in the wrong location. I think Rochelle was talking about how they wanted to be on a certain side of the river, so they passed on this great site because it was in the wrong location, on the wrong side of the river. So this is where the market study can help you weigh your options in a real-world situation. And as long as you've researched those options and you've planned accordingly, then you're going to have all of the information that you're going to need to make the best decision for your co-op and ensure that you're going to open successfully. Um, uh, I could stop here for more questions if there's any, or I could launch right into those specific characteristics. Um, we're good on time, so. Why don't you keep going, Debbie? OK. Um, all right, so uh, this is the last segment, all right? And what I want to do here is I want to go through, uh, we talked about location and site in general, but now I want to talk about those specific location characteristics and those specific site characteristics that you want to look for when you're picking your co-op. All right. Uh, first, we're going to talk about location characteristics. Um, they're going to include the population density. You know, the, a lot of people worry that their market isn't large enough to support uh, a co-op. So it's not only uh, population density that's important, it's your site's proximity to this density. Um, you want to, as uh, I just put in, in uh, just for comparison purposes, on average, a co-op trade area. This is based on about 100 existing co-ops. They have about 125,000 people residing in uh, households in there. Now there's co-ops, successful co-ops with a lot lower um, population density. I think um, Maryland's co-op in Putney, Vermont, probably is one of the lowest. So it ranges, but this is just an average, just so if you want to compare your situation to the average, you have it. Um, you also uh, want to consider the demographic quality of the trade area population and the extent to which it's in profile uh, for a co-op. Now, the, the demographic characteristics that correlate positively with co-op sales are college education levels of at least a bachelor's degree, um, white-collar occupations, and most uh, specifically, those that correlate strongly with co-ops are when people are uh, in a government occupation or a health occupation or an educational field, and even self-employed came out very strong positive correlation. Uh, the age group that uh, showed the strongest correlation is that aged 40 to 50 years. And there was no income range that popped out uh, as most significant. All I can tell you is that higher income levels did correlate more strongly than lower. So. Um, Income is important. It's just not that there's a, a, a specific range that I could tell you. Uh, other location characteristics. Um, you, um, hmm. you don't want to look at just the, uh, uh, at the demographic composition of the entire trade area or market area, but you want to make sure your co-op is located to where your in-profile customer is concentrated within the market and in an area that is not restricted by any barrier like you know, the river barrier in, in Northampton. Um, no, let's, uh, I think I have a map next. Yeah, OK, so here's, here's a map of Tallahassee, Florida. And the blue dots show the distribution of college-educated residents in Tallahassee. Um, and those red lines that you see on the map, those are all the major roadways crisscrossing the market area. And you can at that black dot in the middle of that six-mile ring is the co-op. It's New Leaf Market. It's an existing co-op. And you can see that it's pretty centrally located to a strong uh, base of uh, in-profile trade area residents. And not only that, it's, uh, uh, there's a lot of red roads converging, so it's got great regional access. So when you're thinking about your, uh, where your co-op should be located, you want to make sure it's, on, it's in the right part of town, meaning the, right, uh, the better demographic quality in town uh, with no barriers. There's no river here, but in Rochelle's situation, that was a consideration where you want to make sure you're on the right side of the river, the correct side of the river. Um, so uh, that is just... Uh, 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 just something to be aware of how close you are to the population base 
that you want to serve. All right, and as I keep saying, trade area accessibility or the ease or difficulty that customers can find and get to or from your store is an important location characteristic. You want your co-op to be located on a major road in your market uh, because it, it's going to raise awareness of your co-op more quickly, which accelerates your sales growth. Um, but it also in, it increases your trade area extent as well. And I've got uh, a couple of contrasting situations to show you. Um, this is a co-op in Syracuse, New York. That um, It's an example of a small trade area and the location characteristics that cause it to be such a small trade area. Um, it's located in a neighborhood. There is no regional access. So you can see there's no red roads in and around that co-op. Um, so there's no regional access. There's no retail development. When I said it's in a neighborhood, I mean it's in a neighborhood. There's just other houses around it. That's it, no retail. And the store doesn't have a parking lot. So I'm sure you're not surprised that most of the people that come to this store get there uh, by walking or riding their bike. So its trade area is very small. That uh, thick kind of reddish, dark reddish line is its trade area boundary. And you can see in most directions it goes about two miles. That circle is a two-mile ring around the store. But if you just look at those sales dots, those purple dots, really the, most of the sales are coming from about a half a mile to a mile away. Uh, uh, so you can see how tight really its, its draw is. The store also has much lower than average sales performance levels throughout its trade area. You know, obviously, you're not going to carry as many groceries walking or riding your bike as you, as you would if you were driving your car. So what ends up happening is this co-op uh, sales performance levels are only a third of the average achieved by other existing co-ops that have the same, uh, basically the same size as this one. Um, and that's despite the fact that this is actually a very in-profile part of the Syracuse uh, um, uh, market. So um, in contrast to that, we'll go back to my popular Tallahassee uh, uh, co-op. This, um, this co-op, like I said, those thick red roads are major roads. It's located on a major road. It's very close to a significant amount of retail development, development including the, uh, uh, like a major shopping mall just down the street. This co-op has a parking lot, unlike the one uh, that I just showed you in Syracuse. Um, and I would describe this as much more of a regional location um, versus the one in Syracuse that is more of a, uh, a, a neighborhood or local location. And you can see its trade area, which again is that very thick, um, dark reddish line, that, that's about a 15 to 20 mile trade area extent. So my only point is that if you're located on a major road with good visibility, you're capable of drawing customers from a broader area, um, and that will translate into more customers and more sales for the co-op. Um, all right. Nearby retail concentration uh, and the extent to which they're going to provide good or beneficial synergy uh, is also an important location characteristic. Uh, Co-tenants like uh, bookstores, coffee shops, office supply stores, um, specialty bakeries, any, any upscale specialty store, anything that would serve a similar customer demographic as a natural food store is going to make a good co-tenant for your co-op. But there's going to be certain, certain ones that while they're going to produce some good synergy, you don't want to be right next to. You don't want to be right next to a sit-down restaurant. You don't want to be right next to a movie theater or a fitness club because they all have high parking requirements and they all tie up parking spaces for an hour or so and you don't want your parking tied up for, for that long of a time. Uh, so on this, sticking to that topic of retail synergy, this is, uh, this is Tallahassee. This is, I got this aerial off of um, Google Earth. Uh, the New Leaf Market is uh, sort of on the uh, bottom left-hand side of the aerial. Um, and it is actually in a shopping center called Parkway Center. And just to the east, kind of uh, catty corner, you can see there's a Borders bookstore. There's Best Buy. There's Office Depot. 
And then just to the east is the major mall that I was saying. It's the largest, strong, strongest mall in the market. And there's retail all up and down this road called Appalachian Parkway. Um, I'm just showing the highlights on this aerial. And we actually went into the store and we surveyed the customers and we asked them what prompted their visit, their, uh, visit to this particular co-op. And we found out that over 20% of its business was being generated by customers who said that they were in this area shopping another store and that's why they stopped it at New Leaf Market. So that's a big percentage. So you can see how important retail synergy uh, can be to your um, can be to your co-op uh, its sales performance, which is not the case for Syracuse because it has no retail synergy. So that covers all of the location characteristics, uh, the specific ones you want to look for um, when you're picking your site, and um, basically you want to locate your co-op as close as possible to where the college-educated population is concentrated. Uh, or where there are people that are employed in jobs related to the government or health care or education. And you should opt for a regionally prominent location instead of a neighborhood location. And you want to pay attention to nearby retailers to make sure they're providing the right synergy, meaning that they appeal to the same type of customer as your co-op. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people are impatient and don't want to wait for that regionally prominent site and then decide, well, you know, there's this other site that's less than a mile away, but it's not on the major roadway, and it's not going to have the same sales potential, even though it's less than a mile away. So these are all the things that you want to make sure that, that you want to be focused on uh, in terms of the location for your co-op. Uh, all right, so uh, Marilyn, any questions that uh, I should pause for here? Yeah, there's a question from uh, David. Uh, David, I've unmuted you if you want to... Um uh, tell oh. us where you're from and ask your question. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm uh, with the Bay Ridge Food Co-op in Brooklyn, New York. And um, a lot of what's being discussed right now doesn't apply to us. Our landscape is considerably different. And we're not, there are other characteristics about our co-op that are different too. And I'm just wondering if if we're choosing, and maybe you're going to get into this, but essentially our choice is not going to uh, involve a, a lot of parking considerations because in New York City um, the option to choose a location for a new co-op that has corresponding dedicated parking uh, just just is beyond the scope of a new co-op to be able to afford S and uh, we're also more likely to have uh, people come to our co-op via public transportation even if they're traveling a little bit of a dif difference uh, distance because you know we have the subway and we have an extensive bus system as well and people uh, actually do shop that way quite often uh, if they don't have other means of transportation. So I was just wondering if we were going to be able to talk about a much denser environment than what we're presently talking about. Yeah, well, a lot of what you're mentioning is, uh, you know, parking, and that's a site characteristic. This is, uh, I mean, you can still apply this to a dense, these, these topics to a denser market, even though I've, illustrated, you know, Tallahassee, which is not your situation. Um, you know, for example, you want to be in, you're in a densely developed area, but you still want to be in a part of your market area where you have the most in-profile customer base. Um, so uh, you, you'd want to be, I was just doing a study in western Philadelphia, and there are, uh, you know, just a couple of neighborhoods that have the right uh, the strongest demographic uh, uh, profile in terms of college education and the right employment characteristics that I want to make sure when they relocate their store, they stay within that uh, area and don't move away to it into a, a more uh, out-of-profile neighborhood. Um, and, of course, uh, it's always nice to have other shops around where your co-op is, even in a dense in, in environment, because people will, uh, you know, make uh, multiple uh, stops. So there's a, uh, a co-op in um, in downtown Kalamazoo. I know this is not Brooklyn, but just to give you an idea, uh, that they actually get a lot of their business from people that go to a nearby yoga studio, and after yoga, they stop in at the co-op, 
and, uh, and, and purchase their food before they go home. So, you know, there, there are going to be uh, certain businesses that are going to provide the right synergy for you, and there's going to be neighborhoods that are more in profile for you that you want to stick to. So these topics that I'm discussing are still going to apply, um, even, you know, whether it's a, it's a market like Tallahassee or a market like um, uh, uh, Brooklyn. And, and some of your questions had to deal with site characteristics, which I'm actually covering next. And, you know, I just, you know, want to remind you that I'm talking about these are the ideal ones that you want to pick, pick from. And to the extent that you don't have parking, but it's not available, well, then you don't have a choice. You have to go with that. But that does indeed limit your sales performance levels. And uh, the, uh, the, the sales forecast will be based, though, on other existing co-ops that are in dense neighborhoods. So they'll reflect the fact that most of the people are showing up at your store um, by walking their public transportation. So, um, and they probably also have smaller trade area extent like you would probably have for that reason as well. Yeah, I think I think there's another determinant here that I should probably add in. Our co-op is modeling itself after the uh, member labor model that the Park Slope Food Co-op has, which draws 15,000 people from beyond just Brooklyn alone. And we are also in Brooklyn, and we're looking to serve a community that is about 125,000 people as the main trade area and surrounded by three or four other neighborhoods that are roughly equal in density, maybe a little bit smaller. I'm talking about I've got one community of 125,000 people that is the primary demographic that, that you're talking about. I have that mm -hmm. entire area to choose from. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I guess when you're trying to determine some, in other words, I'm not seeing anything yet that that differentiates one portion of it from another other than slight variations in ability to obtain on-street parking. I guess I'm looking for maybe finer gradations than, than maybe we'll talk about today or within the scope of this presentation. I don't know. But I guess I should yeah. just yeah. let you go well, on. Well, <laughs> yeah, we're probably getting into a little more detail for your specific situation. But there are going to be ways to differentiate sites in your community of, you know, 125,000 people or however many it is, um, because there's going to be facility characteristics that you want to consider, which fall under site characteristics, as well as, you know, you, you would prefer to be on that major roadway that goes through your um, community and not one of the side streets or neighborhood streets. Uh, and that would usually be the, the, the street that's going to go through your part of town that also has most of the other shops and businesses located on it. And that will affect your, uh, uh, raise awareness uh, levels of your new store more quickly. Um, but uh, what I'm going to suggest is we move on to the site characteristics section because some of those, are, I think, might help you differentiate sites within your community. Um, and But let me first ask Marilyn if there's uh, anyone else who had uh, a question about the location characteristics section. And no, I don't have anybody else waiting right now, so I think going to site characteristics is very good. OK, okay David. So hopefully we'll um, cover, uh, I guess, uh, more helpful uh, information in the next section for you. And then you can, uh, after that section, uh, ask me any more questions uh, in follow-up, OK? So, site characteristics. Now, let's talk about uh, the ideal site characteristics that you want to look for. The first thing I want to talk about is visibility. Um, you know, chances are, if you're a new startup, you're not going to have this big advertising budget, so you want uh, your co-op. Uh, and or its signage to be visible from as many uh, different directions as possible and from as far away as possible. You don't want to be on a side street. You don't want to be on a dead end street. You don't want to be completely surrounded by trees, which I've seen. Ideally, you want to be on the hard corner of a major intersection or at least visible from that intersection or along whatever the main commercial road is that runs through your town. 
Uh, I've done uh, literally thousands and thousands and thousands of customer interviews, and they all say the same thing, that they first find out about your store by either driving by it or walking by it. So uh, I, I can't really stress this enough. You have to find a visible, as highly visible as possible, location for your co-op. You're not going to achieve mature sales volume uh, on the first day that it opens. Um, and uh, just based on historical data, it takes four years or more to actually reach that mature sales level. And, and by mature, I mean when most of your community residents are aware of your store and they actually change their shopping behavior and begin shopping your store on a regular basis. And that process, that maturity process, it can be accelerated by a highly visible location or it could be slowed tremendously by a not exactly location. And, and believe me, if, that, if, you're, if you're like me, once you're accustomed to shopping a store, you're just really reluctant to change because you, you know that store has what you want and you, or what, at least what you're used to buying and you know where everything is. So it takes a while for, for you to change uh, your shopping habits. Um, and then, it, you know, that not exactly location, it can slow your sales growth to a point that you might actually go out of business um, before you reach that mature sales volume that is possible for you. So. Um, Visibility is very, very important. Other than uh, visibility, you want to consider how easy or difficult it is uh, for shoppers to enter or leave your store's parking lot. You know, if you can hear that, that's my phone. Sorry. I'm on my cell phone, so my office phone is ringing. Sorry about that. I meant to uh, turn that off. But it's not working for me today. There's a button on my phone where it's supposed to send it directly to a uh, voicemail, but it wasn't working for some reason today. Sorry about that. Anyway, back to uh, the parking lot. You want to consider the number of access points into your parking lot, whether they have traffic signals, um, whether there are left-hand turn lanes or deceleration lanes. Uh, for example, there's a co-op in Colorado that's on a highway that it's a 50 mile per hour highway, and I didn't see the co-op until I was past it. So it's always nice to have good signage and deceleration lanes so you can actually see the store and turn into the parking lot in time before you go flying past it. So um, now that we talked about the ease of getting into and out of the parking lot, let's focus on the parking lot itself. Um, shoppers prefer to park within sight of, the, of your store's entrance and within about 300 feet of it. And the parking lanes uh, between the rows of parking should be perpendicular and not parallel to the storefront. And then there's a quick uh, site plan to show you uh, what I mean. You see the store on the, on the right, kind of the top right of this uh, sort of L-shaped center. This has good parking configuration because if I'm, the, the drive lines are perpendicular to the storefront, so when I leave the store, I can push my cart right down the lane to my car. Now right next to it, to the left, you can see the, the uh, drive lanes are parallel to the storefront. So when I leave the store with my cart and I'm parked in the second lane, I have to navigate that shopping cart between cars, and there might not be room between cars, and if there isn't, then I have to go all the way around that drive lane to get to the next lane um, to get to my car. So better to have it parallel or perpendicular than parallel to your storefront. So just another thing you want to consider. Um, all right, and let's talk about the size of your parking lot. Uh, there are uh, plenty of studies out there that show that the ideal parking in the suburbs, uh, where everyone's going to drive to your store, is going to require about eight parking spaces per 1,000 square feet of your of your store's total size. And in, so if you have a 10,000 square foot store, you need 80 parking spaces. And that's for both your employees um, and the uh, customers of your store. But usually you're OK if you have uh, six spaces uh, per 1,000. Uh, yeah. So if it's a 10,000 square foot, if you have 60, that should be enough. Um, and that is the end of the site characteristics. So just to summarize, you want to make sure you have a visible location on a major road, whatever the main commercial route is in your market. Uh, and that's free advertising for you um, because people are going to find out by you mostly by driving by or walking by your store. And you want to have at least 
six parking spaces for every 1,000 square feet of your total store size. Be nice if you had a traffic light to get in and out of your parking lot, and you want to have the drive lanes in your parking lot that are perpendicular to your storefront. Okay. So those are the ideal site characteristics that you want to look for. Is are there any questions about uh, about those? Uh, yeah, oh Debbie, my, Debbie, I have I a question. Realize we're at the end. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, there's a question from Kate. She doesn't have a microphone, so I'll. Uh, but she typed it in. Uh, they have a goal of addressing food deserts uh, in a community, a metropolitan area that has about a half a million people. And they're wondering if there's ever been a market study done for a multi-store co-op that would have like one large central store slash warehouse and then some smaller satellite stores in neighborhoods. No, there hasn't. But that's, uh, that's kind of been a re recommendation um, for a lot of co-ops that want to do multiple stores where they do, um, you know, kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it a commissary or what, in one location and basically, you know, maybe do have your bakery in one, one store and then have that serve the other stores. But no, nothing like that is, has really been addressed in a, in a market study to date. And we're getting close to the end of the hour. I wonder if Rochelle might want to add anything at this point from uh, her experience about the site and location characteristics of their co-op. <laughs> um, we, uh, I think the thing to to keep in mind is what what um, ev everything that Debbie is saying is 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 really important. And unless you're really really lucky, you're not going to get everything. Um, and so, um, you know, you, we ended up building our store in a in an old. Uh, gravel quarry um, and it was it ended up being a, a good thing but um, you know every everything that everything that you can't do that you would like to do is going to have an effect you know on how how your startup sales are going to be so they can really help you evaluate when you're trying to choose between you know one something that's that you don't when you're trying to, we had to decide sometimes between things that we didn't really like that well, um, and and so it's really good to have somebody that can help guide you to which is what are the what are the things that you don't like that are going to be worse in the in the long run, and which can you figure out a way to mitigate or or live with. Thanks, Rochelle. Mm -hmm. um, we will be having an evaluation at the end, uh, so if you have um, comments about today's session, just stay on for a minute. There's just a few questions. We appreciate your answers to that. Um, the next session will be in two weeks, and uh, that session will be uh, with Bill Gessner uh, on developing and managing a timeline for your projects. Uh, Debbie, I think we're we're coming up on the end. If you want to make any closing comments, and then we can uh, turn it over to the evaluation. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank uh, everyone for attending. Uh, especially wanted to thank Rochelle uh, for taking time out of her busy schedule. Um, I, I'm glad she was able to share her experiences with you. It's always nice to have somebody who's kind of um, been down this road before to kind of share their experiences with people that are about to go down that road. So um, thank you, Rochelle, and uh, thank you, audience. And if anyone has any follow-up questions, my contact information is on the, on the webinar slide, so feel free to call me or email me. And I should also mention that in, a, in addition to the evaluation, the um, a recording of the webinar and all the materials that Debbie presented and uh, that Rochelle participated in will be available on our website, cdsconsulting.coop. And you'll find them find them there. We'll be posting the recording in a, in a couple of days. So thank you, Debbie. Good presentation. Thanks, Rochelle, for your help. And we hope to see everybody again in two weeks 